네 엄마가 돌아가셨다. 이 가방 속에 있는 한 엄마 한은 더 커질 거다. No. Zin, hi Iris, how are you doing? Nice to speak to you. <웃음> Good to speak to you. So first of all, obviously congratulations on the movie. I was just been watching it now, and it's uh, I loved it. It's fantastic. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I've I've got two kids myself, um, a 13 year old and a 10 year old. And I couldn't help. I mean, I, before I had kids, I always kind of thought I don't want to say the things to my same as my parents because it was like they didn't know what they're talking about. And then obviously, yeah. things kind of come around in, in, in circles, <laughs> no? And you you just can't help yourself. So I mean, I imagine a kind of genesis for the for, for for writing this film was that, but I imagine it was a lot more kind of deep rooted than that for you. Can you kind of uh, briefly explain how the whole idea for the story about becoming the mother yeah. came about. I, I, it really pleases me to hear that that was sort of your, you know, that's something that, that came, came to mind when you're watching, because I do think, you know, um, when you're younger, you see your parents in such a, a specific way and they sort of, you know, they, they only, their only function is to be your parents, you know, the way that yeah. we see them. And then, you know, once you get older, you start to see the, the humanity that they are flawed people that they have also had, you know, certain, you know, struggles in their life that maybe you weren't really uh, quite either familiar with or didn't really understand. And so that, that was definitely sort of like a, a process for me too, is that like, as I get older and seeing my parents and kind of reflecting back on our, on, you know, like our upbringing and, you know, acknowledging like that it was really hard for them to raise us in this country where you know that they were trying to make ends meet and also like didn't really have a grasp of the language and they had all these other challenges that I didn't really fully appreciate until I might you know I became a little bit older and was able to see them in that light and so I really wanted to bring that into the story as well um, and also try to balance the perspective of like you know uh, like the daughter's perspective especially with Chris and being a little bit kind of um a little bit more naive in terms of like, you know, that, that starting point of seeing your parents in a certain way. And then for Amanda as well, that she's sort of in, in this in-between space where she is both a mother and a daughter and having to confront those two identities. Um, so that really was kind of like the sort of the, the driving force in, in writing this. So that really fascinated me about the, 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 the film itself is, is the fact that the Sandra's character is, is very reticent. She really wants to kind of hide her past. Yeah. And, in a way embrace that she's American, no? Especially her daughter, yeah. she doesn't speak a lick of, of Korean because she's American, no? Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, she doesn't want her daughter to embrace American, to America, yeah. kind of the American way of life, no? Where, where, did, where did that balance come from, that, idea, that balance in the story come from? Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely was something that I drew upon my, my own life is that, you know, I, even though I grew up in Chicago, which is a pretty, I think, diverse city, and it's a big city, that like, you know, going to school, it, you know, I definitely felt different. I felt a little bit out of place, or I felt, you know, when I walk around, it's like, is every, you know, is it so clear that I'm just like the Asian kid in the, in the class. And it was, you know, it was very much a, a sort of a crisis of identity when I was right. younger and that I thought, oh, well, I, I really wish I could just, you know, I wouldn't stick out so much or I would fit in. And so, you know, there was a lot of sort of like, um, like uh, uh, not acknowledging where I came from, right? And just trying to fit in as much as possible. And then when I got older, you know, I, I finally came to this place um, where I thought, you know, this is something that I'm really interested in. This is something that I want to connect with. And I regret kind of pushing it away when I was younger, but I do want to make up for that. And so, you know, actually making this film, there were a lot of questions I had in terms of like the Korean elements. And, and so like, you know, I call my parents, I'm like, what's this, what's that? And I, they loved it. I think they were very happy that I was like, showing a lot of interest and asking mm. a lot of questions because for them you know, it's very they never really push it on me but they it, you know I, I do think they really want me to embrace sort of the the traditions and the culture even though it, you know sometimes it may feel a little bit outdated that at least trying to gather the, what the essence of it you know is uh -huh. yeah yeah and obviously the kind of the folklore that we see in the film is that very true to 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 life uh, is it actually based around specific korean folklore like in terms of like the ceremony and stuff? Uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the kind yeah. of supernatural yeah. things that we see in there. Right. Yeah, it's def it definitely is rooted and inspired. Um, you know, the, you know, we take a little bit of liberty, but there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's, um, there's stuff in there that I would see in my life and in my home that I really wasn't familiar with. And so it wasn't until recently that I started asking those questions. And so, and so I really wanted those the characters to reflect that experience of when they first see this imagery, especially Chris, who has no awareness kind of of any cultural context of where she comes from, that when she starts to see some of this imagery, it feels very strange and foreign to her, even though she is Korean. But then by the end of the movie, she starts to really kind of embrace and is very curious about learning more and, and wanting to identify with that part. And so that really is a sort of a reflection of my journey in that 
you know, it, for me to finally come to the place of acceptance. Mm -hmm. And would you say that in, in a way, making this film, you were almost like Chris and it, it kind of brought you closer to your family and you kind of seeking out where you came from and, and kind of the two of you shared stories with each other kind of yeah. brought you closer yeah. in the process, I imagine, no? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was fun. And, you know, I like, I don't know if my mom will ever see this movie because she also just doesn't like scary movies. Uh, and she's not like a huge film that it, regardless. Um, but, you know, I, mean, I was very reluctant to tell her what the movie was about at first. But like through this process, like I think she, through context clues, she's starting to like understand a little bit more uh, about it. It. and uh you know and I think she knows that it's not actually inspired by her but it was a lot of you know it was a lot of um like a lot of fun conversations of just me asking uh, about you know some some of the cultural things and just things that they went through in life that I could draw upon just to give it a little bit more sort of specificity and a little bit more nuance in the character background um so yeah so it, it, it definitely um made for some interesting conversations <laughs> uh -huh. and then before we wrap up obviously i want this i mean the, the one of the executive producers obviously is sam rami who is yeah. who's renowned for his horror horror yeah. background no that must have been fantastic to have him on board how hands-on was he um, and i don't know if it was just me knowing that he was involved but certain things felt very evil dead there i mean the house <laughs> brought kind of certain kind of ideas back from, sure. from evil dead and then the, the kind of the the wooden uh hatch that's kind of oh, yeah, yeah, were, sure. were they just happy coincidences or were they just was that just was that something to, to do with Sam Raimi involved there at all yeah no Sam Sam was great he's I mean obviously he's such an icon and he was um yeah it was he was very much there uh you know through the development process and he was very uh he was very good about from the from the beginning understanding kind of the the what I was trying to do with the relationships and, and trying to preserve kind of the um, the arc of the characters in terms of where, where they needed to land in terms of like, it's not just about like this sort of like banishing the, the evil spirit to hell, you know, that when that spirit is your mother, it becomes so much more complicated. So like, how do you, how do you like draw the humanity out of these characters, even if they are like a supernatural entity? So that part was, it was great to work with Sam on. And there were definitely like, uh, you know, things that he's sort of like suggested and inspired in terms of some of like the the horror set pieces and, and then i think some were just maybe subconscious that came out yeah, just happy coincidences now yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Anyway, well, listen we're out of time so thank you so much for your time iris Thanks, Howard. uh Howard. lovely to speak to you and i wish you the best of luck with the film when it comes out on yeah. friday and yeah, hopefully yeah. you get to speak to you about uh, another film sometime yeah, in the future absolutely. Thanks, Howard. all right all the best okay, take care then i'm here <laughs>